but I'll, I'll open it up with, with the first question. And I actually have two, but I'll, I'll do one right now and I can do one toward the close. And then Teresa at the back, I think has one too. So John will collect those questions. So I guess my first question is just personally with my brother, you know, because I love him so deeply and I've tried to be very kind and loving to him. But what, and I, I shared this with you last night, what happens sometimes is he gets very militant and aggressive with me as if to push me away. And I don't do anything that precipitates that. Mm -hmm. What, and, and, and I've noticed this with, it's not just this sin, but I, I do think that it, it's a hallmark of people that are steeped in, in sin. What will you tell to, maybe you've seen this with others that are living the lifestyle, what advice do you give? To me, I think first and foremost, going to God and saying what's really going on, because God knows his heart. Um, so I think coming from a place of prayer and just asking, Father, what's going on in your son's heart? What wound is he speaking out of? There, there's something that sometimes we don't get. It's, it's so easy. Like we don't need the Holy Spirit to see that someone's pissed off, right? It's like, okay, that's pretty obvious, right? Um, but just like I did with the woman on the plane, it wasn't in me. I was just like, God, I don't know what's happened to her. What, what's going on? What's in her heart? And I don't even need to know what's in her heart. I just need to be open to even hear that. And recognize And that. recognize that this might not even be about, see, because that woman on the plane, it couldn't have been about me. She didn't know me. Right. So in that, you do know your brother, he's getting upset, but if you've been loving to him the best you can, he knows you're not perfect, then there's probably something deeper going on. Yeah. Um, so asking God to heal that place okay. and to give you the grace mm. to be a healing ointment to that wound. Yeah. Because something's going on there. Okay. Something's going, I, I have a, a relative um, that is in the lifestyle. She was in a union with, with another woman um, and so much hatred came forth towards me and I could see that, but where, I, where I never really asked God is how is, how is her heart hurt? And how do you want to use me as a vessel to help heal her heart? I can't heal it, but can you heal it through me in a way? And so I think, like I said, coming from a place of prayer and then even addressing, like, I am sorry for how I've hurt you. I'm sorry. I don't, I've tried so hard to love you and you're not hard to love. No. But I, I, I don't, how have I hurt you, Mark? Whatever his name is. Yeah. How have I hurt you? Well, what do you mean? You're, I'm pissed. I understand. I'm just wondering if I've ever hurt you in our life mm -hmm. as your sister. I want to know the areas I've failed you as a, as a sister. That's beautiful. Thank you. Because that just comes from a, a, a point where you're not defensive at all. No, you're actually putting, you're actually opening up. To bring it on. Open. Bring it on. Okay. How have I hurt you? That's helpful. And see what happens from there. And, yeah. and always, always engage. Jesus said, it's better that I go. So you have your spirit, my spirit within you. Mm -hmm. So trusting that God dwells within you. Holy Spirit is present and, and he's going to guide your words. But we got to remember Jesus is meek and lowly in heart. Yeah. That's helpful. That's so, very helpful. Yeah. All right. I, I don't, I, there's two things I want to address right now. John and Sue are going to pass baskets around. I mean, we give uh, a, a small honorarium, obviously, to Kim, but Kim flies all over the country doing these talks. And, and, and really, you know, this is, this is her life. This is her ministry. So if you feel called to make a donation to Kim and her ministry, we'd be very grateful to you. So Kim and Sue are going to pass baskets around while we're doing the Q&A. And I just want to say this too. Um, please don't feel like the, the gospel message is free. <laughs> she didn't even know I was doing this. No, I didn't. This. And, and I'm okay with it. All, all proceeds do go to Unforgotten Faces, my nonprofit in Ethiopia. Okay. Um, so we use all that to go and help the children over there as well. And then when churches or people can't maybe afford to fly me somewhere, I use this to help offset where other people. All right, to our next question. How do we best ensure that light bearing is not mistaken? This is a great question for affirmation. Amen. Yeah. Um, I think there's a <laughs> sometimes people know where you stand and they and they don't. So I think that's good to know. Like my cousin, I don't need to come in and be like, 
I believe homosexuality is wrong and da 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 and lay it all out. She, she knows where I stand. Many parents who have children in the lifestyle, um, if they're believers, their children know where they stand. Now, if they said, right, and it's, so it's a, it's a great question. Um, if someone, let's say I'm, I'm meeting with someone, I have to take into consideration what my relationship is with them. Do, is this a brand new person off the street? Is it the woman yelling at me next to me that's never met me? Is it my cousin who's known me since I was little? What, what's our relational aspect here, right? And so taking that into consideration with a stranger, I'm, if they're like, oh yeah, and I, you know, a woman, let's say it's a woman and, and they're married to another, or in a union with another woman, I'm not gonna be like, oh my gosh, congratulations. I'd say, wow, when did you guys meet? If the Lord's leading me there, when, when did you guys meet? What do you, what do you, what are you drawn to most in her? Why are you asking me that? Are you Christian? Yeah, she's another person. I mean, they're not used to this stuff. It's like, aren't you supposed to tell me it's wrong and it's not really a marriage? And you're supposed to do this when you say marriage? I'm like, well, I just met you. <laughs> you know, I really don't want you to do that to me right now either. Let's maybe get to know each other. And, and when there's a mutual respect and an honor there, we can have more of those deep conversations for sure. But is that what you want to do right now? They're just usually so used to going to war right out the gate. It's like they're coming in and they're like, okay, I'm ready. What do you want to say? And that sounded like you were coming at my sexuality, so my fist is up. And you're like, dude, I was actually talking about cake. Well, it sounded like you're metaphorically talking about my boyfriend. Okay, that's not my heart. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry that people have done that to you. And then when they talked about dessert, you felt like they were talking about you personally. That's got to be really hard to, in every conversation, try to pick up what they're really saying. There's not trust there. There's not safety there. That's hard to have relationship and connection without that. And so I think it's, it's going back to like the motive of your heart too in that. And so for me, as the Lord leads, I never brought it up with the girl on the airplane. I had no clue. I had some promptings that she might be. There was assumptions and we know what those do if you just spell the word out and break it up. But I had some assumptions that she might be in the lifestyle, but many people assume my mom is because she's got short hair. So my gosh, be careful. She's got a very big husband that she's loved for many years. So, <laughs> so in that, I think um, part of that is, is just let Holy Spirit lead you and not let fear lead you. Because when fear starts leading us, we're like, oh my God, I got to make sure they know that I know this is wrong. And they got to leave here knowing that this is wrong. And I'm, I'm telling you, we've got enough people doing that. You take a census. How's that working right now? That's if you agree it's working, then okay but i don't and it didn't work with me so well, in the stephen ministry it's always you 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 show love and you build that relationship and then then you can share these truths but it's it's forging that trust for sure and so don't build up a relationship just to knock it down either though yeah right we don't want to oh i'm going to just build this up but my real intention is to make sure that you come out of that sin your real intention, every relationship we had have in our lives should be, I really want to make sure we both know Jesus. Yeah. And when we know Jesus, he's going to do, he's going to do that heavy lifting stuff. And I think the, I think the other thing too, it just brought something up and I'll, I'll be quick, but I'll, I'll let that go. We'll okay. go on. All right. Uh, we had an online for the live uh, viewers ask, would you share more information about your website? Oh, sure. Yeah. You can go to um, overcome. It's, overcome that's not hard to spell m-i-n because many people are like oh overcome men i get it i'm like no there's someone trying to pick up on something that ain't there i'm like no m-i-n stands for ministries Ministry. um and so it's overcome m-i-n uh, dot com and it just has a lot of resources that have really blessed my life um and and really brought the father's words over my heart um so there's books there's documentaries actually mj uh, who's here with me did an amazing documentary um a few years ago incredible highly suggest it um probably an age thing watch it first before you share it with your grandkids and get popcorn uh, it's called uproot uh here's my heart is the um you can find it on my website so if you just go back to overcome yeah M -I -N it's a great com. website it's yeah. very nice got a website. lot of the different talks or yeah. whatever sharing yeah great okay are you familiar with the courage uh in cure in curate or in curative apostolate in the Catholic Church. Lovely apostolate. Yeah, it's great. They're on my website as well um, for ministry resources. So courage and encourage. I never personally um, went, was a part of those ministries, 
I know courage is for those with same-sex attraction um, and things within uh, the LGBT community and encourage is for family members um, of those within the lifestyle. Um, Father Bochansky and I have had, he's the kind of one who runs or oversees uh, Courage. And so I've done a few things with Courage, spoken at Courage. Um, I've heard it's great. There's another um, ministry I love as well, not in comparison um, or competition, but God is so good to to put different ministries for different children and, and places they're at. And so Eden Invitation is another one um, for kind of a younger generation. They're real focused on God's heart, on building community, um, real active in that. And so there are ministries within the Catholic Church that are really beautiful. And, and those, some actually without outside of the Catholic Church, but still within the Big C Church that are absolutely amazing. So those are on the website as well. So okay. yes, great, great organization and um, stands in the truth of the gospel and the teachings of the church. Okay, that's great. Um, how do you handle uh, that, let's see, and, and my wife, let me see, that our family and my wife accepts my son's lifestyle, that it's okay and it's normal? Mm. There's going to be people who accept lifestyles, not just this one, lifestyles that are not God's way. Yeah. Um, and I think when we can review, reveal the beauty of God's way, right, um, then that shows them another option. Right. Like there, I don't care what it is, whether it's homosexuality or um, stealing drugs, um, infidelity within marriage. Um, we're not at peace. Right. Anything outside of God's will and his, his perfect plan. We're not at true peace because if we're at true peace, see, I don't have to go out into the world and be like, if you're doing this, you're not really happy. I can just go out into the world <laughs> with the peace that God gives me and let that peace preach. Um, and so. I, I feel like it's hard when, you know, families, and I see this a lot, and we'll get to your question right after, um, but we see this a lot in families where maybe a husband is like, I'm just going to love love my daughter, and you need to too, and then maybe you have a wife, and sometimes it's reversed, I'm, I, you know, but one one husband is this way, and the other one, and there's it causes war within even their, their marriage, and then the family. Um, it's hard when one parent is condoning a lifestyle, and one is like, no, I can't condone what God doesn't condone. I, I just can't. It wouldn't be loving them right. I don't really know what to say in that except stand firm. Stand firm in a very loving way. Don't try to force them. Just lead with love. Let love kind of break those things down. Let your child or, or your spouse see how love is driving you. And then that love might start to draw them in. You know, so you be very clear. Be very clear. We don't want to give Satan any doors for this. I'm not saying love and accept everything. I would be a complete heretic, and I wouldn't know God's heart, even in the slightest, to even say that. Um, what I am saying is love the person in front of you while God leads you through how to walk through their life, right, and the things they're doing or not doing. But see them first. And so I, it is hard, and my heart feels for families that get divided over this. It's very common. Um, because sometimes a, a, per, a child is standing in a place saying, well, I'm not going to be a part of this family if you can't accept and, and celebrate where I'm at. And what does a parent do? I mean, that breaks my heart. I know it breaks God's heart, right? Like, I'm going to lose my child if I don't accept this. And I'll tell you in my own life, my mom, I said, mom, if I got married to a woman when I was in the lifestyle, I said, if I got married to a woman, would you come to the wedding? I, I already knew the answer, to be honest. And she said, I couldn't. I love you too much. Great answer. Great answer. Yeah. That was hard to hear, though. Yeah, it's very hard to hear. But <laughs> I don't want to over, over. But she led with love. She did. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. So we've got a question in yes. the back, and then we've got two more here. And I might repeat your question so that the YouTube listeners can hear the question, too. Yeah. 
That was a beautiful question uh, summarized from one of our attendees here who is basically asking, how do we protect our children in today's culture from really an activism mm -hmm. that is and trying to normalize this lifestyle in, in everyday life within the school systems and just everyday culture and you want to lead with love, but at the other side of it, you want to protect them. Yeah, for sure. Love protects, love covers. So there's a reason why we want to cover and protect because that, in scripture, it says love covers. It says it covers a multitude of sins. Um, and so I heard two things when you asked the question and we need to remember, I think you guys clearly know this, but I'll just a reminder, um, I'm not God. <laughs> and I'm not saying that everything that I say is going to be exactly in line with his heart, but I am sharing. And so I love the question. It's extremely relevant. Um, and I deal with it in my own life as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have, we have a, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, so I heard two, um, I'll finish this and then we can have some maybe comments. Um, I heard two things when I heard you ask that question. Um, <laughs> and we can hold them before the Lord. Uh, we can't get the world out of the world. We cannot get the world out of the world. Um, and the next thing is, and then I'll unpack that a little bit, but the next thing that I heard um, was <laughs> we want to keep certain things, you know, these lifestyles and, and agendas, let's call them maybe from some people, not saying that's everyone who lives in the homosexual lifestyle has an agenda, but maybe an overarching agenda that we, we can see, right? Um, so I want to be able to separate that too. Um, and that's real. And we see it. We see it infiltrated into movies and into the school systems. And, and I've been to Sacramento fighting bills um, that this, you know, we're, we're trying to make someone's choice now a have to. And that's just not choice. And so taking away freedom um, in many ways by these things that are happening. And so um, it, it, it's in my heart, too. Um, <laughs> I had someone I did a radio interview with Catholic Answers or something. Um, and they asked me this question, how do we, it's very similar. And I said, look, I can't stop my nephews from learning about and being, whether it's being taught in the school, kids are talking about it, because guess what? Kids now have same-sex parents, right? So I can't stop that. But what I can do is I can raise up my nieces, my nephews, my family, the circles around me to know truth, right? To know truth and stand firm in it. And just do that in love and everything I was talking about before. But it's our job as, as parents, as aunts, as uncles, as best friends, as cousins, right? To stay rooted in the truth so that when the kids go out, they're like, whoa, that don't look like truth. Because I know what truth is, right? And so sometimes, like I said, we're, we're so, they're doing this dance that makes us so like, oh my God, I got to fight in this. I'm like, no, I'm just going to raise up my nephews because I don't know what's going on at his school, whether it's coming through the textbooks or it's coming through the teacher, it's coming through the playground. I don't know what's happening. And I cannot control all of that, but I can raise him up as a young man in God. My nephew, our conversations, he's, he's uh, 12 years old and my little 10-year-old nephew, we're having the same ones. We, we were in Hawaii, right? Beautiful place. I could not control the environment of what was around. We walk into this like souvenir shop. He was seven, six or seven years old at the time. And he looks and he's looking around. He's like, there's cool stuff in here, Auntie Kim. I was like, yeah. And he's like, false God. And I'm like, what? And there's this little Buddha in the corner, very small, false God. And I'm like, whoa, okay, buddy, hold on, bring that down a notch. Yes, yes, you're right. That is a false God. But see, he recognized what was not true, right? Instantly. I didn't have to be like, what is this? He knew because he was, he's being rooted and grounded in love and rooted and grounded in love, which is what, right? The scripture says to be rooted and grounded in love is to be rooted and grounded in God's truth. And so in that, you guys, my nephews go out. There's a little kid. You know what my nephew said? He's, he's the one that's 12. He's like, hey, there's a, a boy at my school and he identified as gay, Kim. And I said, yeah, how do you feel about that, Eli? Instead of just boom, right in, you know, well, that's wrong. And he's just deceived and da, 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 right? All these things that I could come out with that might even be true. I asked him what he thought. He said, I'm praying for him. I'm praying for him and I'm, I'm being his friend. He's not celebrating that. He knows, his, he knows what's true and he doesn't, want it. he doesn't want anything but truth for his own life and for that little kid's life. 
And so I think it comes back to us as a family in the family unit. That's why Satan's so attacking our families is because if he can break up the family unit, then truth stops going out. Right. And so in that, that's not avoiding the real war that's happening. But see, if there's a war happening, then be ready and make sure those around you are ready. Mm -hmm. Right. And so so I think in that sometimes we are so focused on that. We're forgetting, hey, let's just root and ground as a family every day. Let's root and ground. What, what's going on at school right now? What are you hearing? What's, what's, what's going on? And then speak truth into their life right there. You've got the best classroom. You cannot, to a level, we have a job. We vote. We do what we can. We get on legislation. We, we vote the, the people we feel uphold Christian standard. But at the end of the day, if something happens and they don't get in office, what now? That president, that governor is not my God. So I have to root and ground myself in truth, root my family and the surroundings that God's given me in his truth. And then guess what? We're ready. We're ready. And we need each other. This is not a solo thing. And so we do what we can, 100%. Trust me, I would not be hanging out in Sacramento at the Capitol building talking on a microphone that is just not me. I asked if I had to wear shoes. They're like, please. So in some of this stuff, but but I'm doing my part because I do believe in standing up for what is right. I don't want to see certain doctrines coming into the, the schools. Not at all. Of course not. This is something I lived out and I saw such destruction from. I don't want to see that being taught to kids any bit that's not true. But the reality is even the history books got some of that. I cannot control all that, but I can I can be infiltrating my own family and the sphere that God's given me. And that's where I think we really win. I think that's where now they're rooted and grounded in love and truth. And then they go out into a world. Um, it's that currency story. And I'll be quick with this. The gentleman who um, was doing American, uh, the U.S. currency, he's like, dude, how somebody, they didn't say dude, that's my Californian in me. But they said, how do you, there's so many like false bills out there. How do you know the truth? Like you have to study thousands and every day they're making up a new thing to create a false bill. And he's like, oh, I give no attention to what is false. I study day in and day out what is true. I look at the real bill and I know it corner to corner, top to back, front fit, all of it. So that the moment something that doesn't line up with what is true, I know it's false. And so I think that's what we need to do as family. We need to study God's heart. We need to study the word of God. We need to, we need to be so immersed in it. When we walk into a world, we don't got to even get all pissed off about it. We're just like, false God. <laughs> just simple. He kept on. He just needed to call out what it was and he kept moving on. So that was kind of long-winded, but I just I honor your question and hope we got some bit of it. So yeah, and this next question, I'm going to try to summarize this. It goes back to the youth again. And and I I read an article recently where you know, more than 20% of the youth now in school are identifying as, as uh, LGBTQ and, and IA+. Plus. IA+, plus, mm -hmm. that's right. And, and there's more letters that are attached each day. But, you know, so, so they're, and, and they're all on the spectrum, right, of, of um, sexual preferences and genders. And, and they're, they're angry and they're defying God and it's growing by the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then there's the transgender that is creeping out of this as well. Um, and how do you speak to them, to these, to these kids that are really struggling with, without minimizing how they feel? Mm -hmm. um, great question. And I just was reminded of the Garden of Eden. If Eve really knew how good God was and how true he was, and how he was for her and not against her. And Satan came in with a lie that said, if you eat this, you'll be like God. She was already like God, by the way. He was created in his likeness and image. Satan just got a twist in there. So I think, and, and I know some of you are like, gosh, just give me a better answer. But I'm sorry, I believe the true knowledge of God is going to turn sons and daughters back to him and away from all the things that are false, all these fruits that we're biting from. So... And we could probably have a whole hour conversation on that. It's easy to just say that, but it, it, I really do believe it comes back to that. End of the Bible study camp. <laughs> a real one that's not just telling one. them what to do, what they're doing wrong. Right. Right. But that, that is transforming them in love and watch how it'll change. I had a woman call me. She's like, she's one of my good friends. She's like, Kim, my son just told me he was gay. And she's like, what are the odds that one of my best friends 
goes around the world speaking about this. She's like, so here I am. I was like, can you send him to um, see, if he, see if he wants to go to this place called Damascus? It's a Catholic mission uh, group, and they do a summer camp for kids, young kids, middle school, and then up. my nephews just went this last summer. And I said, see if he wants to go there. She's like, do they talk about sexuality? I was like, let him encounter God. She's like, Kim, he goes to church every Sunday. He goes, you know, he's got Bible study. He's got this. I said, I understand. Let's just see what happens. She sent him back. Oh, he met his girlfriend. Wow. Not about, not about. See, the opposite of homosexuality is not heterosexuality. We, rem- we need to remember that. Mm-hmm. So often we're like, okay, transformation means you're now married. No, homosexuality is sin. The opposite of sin is holiness. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean holiness always looks like marriage. Holiness always looks holy right? And so in that, I'm not celebrating because he has a girlfriend. I'm celebrating because he found God's heart for him at this camp, stopped rejecting God and started drawing to God. And in turn, the fruit started falling off because the root was changing. Mm-hmm. She's like, Kim, he's leading a Bible study now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the key. That's the key because it, it goes to the, the analogy that you talked about with the oranges. Mm-hmm. I love that analogy. So thank you for your beautifully challenging message. I look forward to your book and learning, and and I want you to make sure you mention the book again. Um, I look forward to your book and learning how you came to this moment. My question, Jesus ate with the tax collectors and shared many meals with sinners. How do we deal as Catholics with the issue of worthy reception of communion, especially with those figures whose sin is public Uh, For myself, communicating that truth is the most difficult to communicate. The complaint we hear, why do Catholics want to exclude me from receiving the Lord's meal? Well, especially in this sin, um, I mean, I hate to say it, but my brother was receiving and he was living in sin. And, you know, if, if I'm in mortal sin, I mean, like I'm racing for the confessional. So... Uh, unless I'm not aware of it, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Well, first off, what makes, when we want to study, go back to the teaching of the church, what makes it sin is the knowledge of it. So we've got to remember to, and that might've just freaked y'all out, but to really be a sin, and you can dive into this in the catechism, you have to have knowledge of that it's truly a sin and that it's truly wrong. I will admit for me, I knew it was wrong and I was still doing it. I'm going to just be honest but many don't, many don't, and don't instantly, it's not our place to say, they know what's wrong, I know they do, and they're still, I don't, (laughs) so, you know, it, it, what's that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, I celebrate marriage too, for sure. Between a husband and wife, that's how God created it, and He knows what He's doing. Um, I think and so. I'm not saying just everybody. It's kind of above my pay grade. And the Lord, to be honest, I don't want to speak into something um, that the Lord hasn't first spoken to me first about. Right. And so I want to. I want to kind of yield, not because I don't want to answer an awkward question. I don't want to answer a question. I want God to answer a question, and then me try to put that out. Um, as an answer. So I really haven't had a lot of conversations with him on this. Um, It's something that he's bringing forth. Um, I think that there is where the church is called to uphold, right? And and it goes back to scripture. Thank you, Lord. It goes back to scripture. It says, and he who receives me unworthily is bringing damage upon themselves. Yeah. Okay. But what I want to just be careful with is where we become God to say, you don't and you do so right the accuser of the brethren and so we want to just be careful we, we hold fast to the truth that god says we hold fast to the preserved teachings of the church mm-hmm. while holding that he is god because there's a big reality y'all that some people's sins are real out there and i'm telling you let's go through that list together if i open it up we're gonna be like oh my gosh because uh, there's a lot and, and i know we could say and Scripture talks about kind of how the church has used the language of venial and mortal sin, right? And so we know there's a difference between me hijacking a piece of gum, right? And sleeping outside, sleeping with someone outside of marriage. 
Um, but they also speak, I hate to say this, but I'll drop this little bomb, also speaks to contraceptives. Exactly. Also speaks to a lot of things that we don't want to talk about. And so we're so easy, right, to say you shouldn't receive, but it's, it's just we've, we've kind of put these lenses on that only see certain things. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. That's kind of an all over the place answer. I think we have to seek the Lord in that. Um, we yield towards leadership and ask that God would speak to leadership. Um, thank God we do have leadership and we need to understand just as in the days of, of David, right? King David, it wasn't perfect leadership, never will be. We had one perfect king and he's reigning in heaven, um, but he has appointed and we know he uses all things to work for good for those who love him. And so I think it's a place that we can intercede. Um, I heard this at a, a leadership summit I was at a few weeks ago and the, the pastor said, can we please not speak into something until we've wept about it? Mm. So maybe let's get on our faces and let's cry and hurt the way God's heart hurts. And then I have a feeling when we get up, we'll walk the way he has for us to walk. So let's maybe get to a place of God, let this hurt my heart the way it hurts yours. And then I can speak from a broken and contrite spirit. Beautifully said. Okay, we've got another question. <laughs> Do you want to come up here so I'm, people? I'm a, lady, I'm a member of Our Lady of Amen. And a few years ago, uh, Bishop Casey, when he was still Bishop, he came for a Bible study, and he was there. And I kind of the Baptist Church in America, and I said, Bishop, and this is where Bill Donnelly was the center. And I said, Bishop, why is it that we have politicians who openly claim to be Catholic, but who also support abortion on stand, and yet they receive the sacrament? Mm -hmm. And his response was what you just said. Oh, okay. And that was, Maybe. we don't know how his conscience is going, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. Yeah. And honestly, that's what you, I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And what you just said is basically saying, Bishop was right. And, and I have to be honest with you, I'm going to struggle with that for a while. Amen. The wrestle is good. Yeah. I, I just, I just want to thank you. Really, I, I want to take a moment and just honor you for being vulnerable and saying, like, I had this. And I went to leadership and I got this and it's been hard. That's, that's not an easy, that's a very humble thing to do what you just did. And so I just, I honor you in that. And I trust that, yeah, I trust that. Uh -huh. Can I finish real quick? Just. Yeah, I could see that. So that so that our YouTube listeners can hear this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Not make a public, even more of a public scandal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for so, sure. So we have a Catholic scholar and a theologian here who just said that when a political figure is uh, living in a particular sin, they are to be confronted by a Catholic leader about that sin. Right. So that privately, privately, That's privately scripture. very, very importantly, mm -hmm. privately, one on one, so that they have the ability to rectify that. Mm -hmm. And if they do not rectify that, that is when you withhold the Eucharist, uh, mm -hmm. the reception of the Eucharist. Yeah. So I just, I want to, I'm going to speak to that because it's really good that you shared. I just want to finish what I was saying quickly and then jump over um, just to continue to wrestle with that with the Lord um, and with the teachings and, and he's going to bring it to fullness. And then sir, to what you said, um, it's actually, and you know this more than me, you'll probably know the address of it in the Bible. Um, it talks about where you, and I love that you said one-on-one. -on -one, Right. This is not to make a humiliation out of someone, but when someone is public, has a public stance and very verbal about it and then makes a public stance of and I'm Catholic. Right. There's a conflict there that's very obvious in creating an issue. Right. And so 
the scripture said, I don't know if it's in first Timothy, you probably know, um, where it says you go to that person one-on-one -on -one and you talk to them and if they still refuse, now you bring another person with you, right? And not just randomly, I'm going to grab just this guy. No, you, right? With, with leadership, with understanding, and you bring them and now you address with them. And if they still don't, still don't listen, you, you just say, then clearly we're in disagreement. You don't agree. Why would you even want to receive? Because you're in disagreement, right? And so then there should be that, that thing. And that goes back to scripture. Now, keep in mind, y'all, I never claim to be a theologian. I just, I want to make that clear. And, and I respect and honor those who are called to that. Um, but when, and that's why I even said, I, I, like, I almost said, I think Father Mike is maybe better to ask in this and, and some other, <laughs> but not just Father Mike, ask people who have that knowledge. Sure. I'm sure. very clear saying, I don't have that. Here's kind of where I'm at with things, but that's not this, but that's but not it, the gospel fully. And so I'm glad that you shared um, into that. And I think that's where you can look into those scriptures. Do you know where it is, sir, that I'm talking about the bring one, go one-on-one, -on -one, then go two, and then if they still refuse? Yeah. Matthew. Okay. Timothy. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Good clarification. Yeah. Amen. It's still honoring the person, but they're just not honoring what they're being a part of and rejecting. So they're asked to accept that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I mean, for me, even personally with my own struggles, um, I go to counseling, I go to inner healing, I have deliverance um, ministries I'm a part of that receiving deliverance and healing. And, and so we got to remember the love of God works through a lot of different ways. I'm speaking directly just as a personal human being. And so in that, and, and just seeing how God uses ministries and things and, and even encourage and, and all of these. So um, it's God is multifaceted in that. And so for me, I'm so thankful because I see the places of healing that have come through counseling, through therapy, through deliverance, through inner healing. The John Paul II healing ministry is amazing. Um, Bob Schutz, who does uh, healing the whole person through the Catholic Church, um, a therapist, you know, and so absolutely. And I think to certain levels of someone's, I, people may have a hard time with this, but brokenness or woundedness, there's different levels they need to now be led to, to be healed and made whole. So beautifully said. Yeah. Let's thank Kim Zember. Yeah. And if, if you don't mind, if we could just, I, I know we're probably a little bit uh, over, but if we can just close in prayer, yes. um, we just love that. And then, beautiful. and then I'll hang out here too. I don't know if I need to hang out outside of the building, if we have to no, no, close no. up shop, but here. I'll hang out for a little bit. And, and also there's flowers. I need the vases, but flowers on the table. So uh, birthdays that are closest to today, get the flowers Amen. to bring home. Thank that's you. not mine. And uh, the prayer cards. Take the prayer cards home. That's thanks to a donor of cup. Thank you. Amen. And I just want to thank you, Vicki, and uh, your group um, for, for welcoming me in, um, for being open, because it's not as common. We know we had some issues with, or maybe you don't know, with, with me coming to a different event that was scheduled. Um, and so I just, I honor your, your bravery. Um, yeah. And your trust in the Lord. With I, I do. I do want to say, yeah, uh, I was very disappointed in what happened in our diocese and talking to Kim. She's never been canceled. 
uh, from another church in the entire United States. Mm -hmm. So it was highly disappointing. So I, I am thankful to you who are here today and to our online viewers. I hope when you see this video online that you share it with everyone that you know so that God can work miracles through Kim's talk. Yeah. And oh, I've got, your, oh, please. Oh, I didn't see you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for sharing that because I have to deal with that too. One, first and foremost, I need to not take it personal, which is very easy to do. And I also need to say, wow, Lord, maybe I wasn't ready. Continue to heal my heart, continue to, to speak to me and, and transform my own heart. And then I felt like the Lord very clearly spoke. Um, and when I say that, that is the relationship that, that I believe. I'm not saying it's the word of the Lord, but it is to me, um, him speaking. And so I felt like he said, Kim, when, when doors close, not when Satan closes a door or when God, just when doors close, I will open a window or I'll take off the roof. So, and just trusting that. And, and maybe, maybe for whatever reason, it's just really putting it back in God's hands and saying, Lord, I, I'm praying for your will. Jesus in Gethsemane, right? I, 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 if I have to go, but your will be done. This is what I desire, but your will be done. And so whatever we face is just like, man, God, I really thought this was you but your will be done. And then just trust that no matter how it walks out. So I'm just, I'm really thankful for you taking um, a step, not for me, not for, but just in the church. Well, um, I'm so. thankful to you for your courage and your conviction and your passion. Yeah. I mean, amen. Yeah. I mean, amen. it's just beautiful. Amen. And please get her book. I'm sure we all know someone who is struggling in the homosexual lifestyle, often someone also suffering from depression I, I think this is the pathway to healing. So I hope you'll buy that book. I'm going to buy it for my brother. Um, yeah, thank you, Vicki. It's called Restless Heart um, from from St. Augustine. Not not even encapsulating a piece of what, what God did through him, but it just, it resonated to my own heart, just a restless heart. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just thank you guys. And, and thank you for the questions. And thank you for being present. Um, I know it's sometimes hard. With certain topics and, and even you sir i'm honored that you're here so much knowledge so much you know that you bring to the table and that you would sit through this um and and listen so thank you for for being here and um just everybody who showed up um and let's just pray and yeah trust god in this so you know father the son and the holy spirit father god thank you um thank you that you are god and we are not thank you that though you give your revelation, you give instruction, you give doctrine, you give so much from your goodness. We still are never you. And I thank you for that because we were never made to be you. Um, I thank you, Lord, for each heart that is here today, my own included, Lord, that you have held us in your hands, that you put breath moment by moment into our lungs because you love us. You are for us and not against us. And we trust that your love will break down the walls and the stoniness in our heart that you will tenderize us and you will send us out tender and truthful and firm in a foundation that only you are, God. And I just pray that any words that I spoke today, God, that, that didn't align with your heart, all things root from the heart, we know that in the Bible, because that the words that come from our mouth are from the abundance of our heart. And so I pray that any words that came forth that didn't line up with your heart, God, that they would right now in Jesus' name just be canceled, marked, null and void away from our memories, just let them float off and, and, and not settle in our minds or our hearts. But the things that were from your heart, God, I pray that you would protect them. I pray that you would plant them into our hearts and our minds and continue to water them, God, as only you can. Holy Spirit, continue to do the good work that you've begun in each one of our lives, though they look very different, very different. I just pray that your will would be done in each one of our lives, that your kingdom would come in and through us in this day as we go forth, Lord, Continue to tenderize us. Continue to hold us firm in who you are and who we are to you and in you as your beloved children. And that you desire as a good father to gather all your children. That, as your word said, Lord, that your heart is that none would perish. 
that even those who do evil, that your heart is that there would be repentance and a return back to the Father, that you would have a complete family at the end of this age. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your cost that you paid. We thank you. Give us grateful hearts, Lord. Take away all pride. Melt it with your humility, God, that you humbled yourself as an example. Help us to be meek and lowly of heart, to see the people in front of us and to see ourselves rightly and others rightly as we learn to see you rightly, God. We thank you and we praise you. We pray this all in the mighty and unmatching name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you.